I was having an adventure through an old pharmacy and I found this covered wagon lamp. This was a common hobby item for old dudes back in like the 40s and 50s. It's like a little lamp thing and you get this little kit and you put it together and Bob's your sister, you got yourself a covered wagon lamp. You gotta think back in the day, this is when people watched like Roy Rogers all the time and every other show was a western, so it was pretty common aesthetic in the uh, American home. So the kit itself may have been valuable, but the, this I have a lot of questions about. Number one, it's not going to go anywhere because it screwed this little board here. I don't know much you know about wagons, but an important part of them is being able to roll. Just the way this was constructed was just giving off the vibe of someone who was avoiding their wife. There's no heart or passion into this at all. No respect to the time period for which it was meant to reflect. It's not going to hold out any rain. It's completely out of level in the front. I couldn't imagine traveling across the plains in this thing. You got the seat going one way, the wagons going another way, the footrest. If you felt asleep behind the wheel you'd roll your dumb ass out of it. This has got the build quality of a Tesla and I cannot abide that. This may have been something one man was very proud of but uh, his family not, not enough to keep it so what I'm doing is trying to basically long story short I'm not taking apart a piece of American history. What I'm doing is trying to reclaim some garbage. Also, I don't know what the fuck he's going to do with this little collection of tools. I don't know if it was just a weekend trip in this wagon, but if you're headed across the country, you're going to need a lot more than just a pick and a shovel. Even after I removed the boot from each wheel, this thing has the turn radius of an old Lincoln Continental, and I would like to improve its handling. For some reason, it has this type of restrictor bar, keeping it from turning side to side. That's the sound my saw makes. Anyone acutely attuned to the necessities of their craft will have a table that's level. That way, when you level whatever your subject you're working on, you know that it's not just some crooked-ass shit because your table's crooked. So I had a plane off about a quarter inch. And then I used my sander. Sanded it. You made short work of that old... Sandy. Even the most out-of-town Jasper would know they didn't have plywood in the 1800s. So to have the side as one solid piece disgusts me to no end. So I want to make it look like boards. So I made some lines. I used my utility knife and then I used my gouge chisel. Aren't we having fun? I'm having fun. We can have fun, but we can also be safe. Always cut and chisel away from yourself. As these lines look a bit ridiculous now, I'll show you how to blend them and make them look more natural later. Now it's time to clean up these rims. I'm not going to be hitting the street on some ugly shoes. I would make the rims red. Why, you ask? Because a traditional Studebaker wagon has red rims. And you'll be like, how do you know that? I'll be like, how the fuck don't you know that? Go look at a Studebaker wagon. Even the nice one, the bad ones, they all have red rims. It's traditional, you dumb fuck. Bet a bunch of you hairy knuckled nimnals just went and deleted your comment about my rims, didn't you? All right, in order to make these boards look more like boards, I went. I got some black stain. I also want to put it all over it because you think if a wagon's uh, hitting the trail or whatever, it's going to be dirty. There's going to be oil from the wheels on it, not to mention your fat, sweaty forefathers just leaning their big, greasy bodies against it. Just all kinds of things that would make it less than perfect and whatever. So if you scratch it up a little bit and put some black stain, don't let it sit too long. Wipe it. Susan's your dentist. You got boards. Modern wagons were run on DC, but apparently wagons back then were more AC with a click switch. Uh, not that I distrusted the uh, guy's ability to run electrical, but it's been quite old. It's been sitting for a long time, so I thought maybe an upgrade would be in order. When taking on a task like this, I find as much an exercise in creativity in what I produce and what I use to produce it. I got a little off task here. At first, I planned to use the belt of a car I never got to put it on because it caught fire and kind of whittle it down to be the treads of my wheels. And then realizing how thin the rubber that they used on their wheels, that nothing would serve me better than electrical tape. So I wasted two hours of my life and $15 that I had spent on this belt three years ago, and I felt really stupid. But then I forgave myself, because that's part of the process. I enjoy greatly things of this time period. I imagine a time when people would have long discussions about the moon, and discussions about the weather meant a lot more. I think it is fashionable nowadays for us to demonize people of this time, their direct role or complacency in a genocide. I sort of find it to be a state of inconceivable arrogance to see yourself as better than someone because you're born in a different time. Unless you're able to demonstrate that you yourself go so far beyond the moral standing of those around you in your current time, it would be kind of ridiculous to assume that if you lived in their time, you would treat things a lot differently. Notwithstanding the horrors that were brought down on the native people that lived here, there is something to be said about the people that moved westward. During certain periods, you had about a 50-50 chance of survival. People were escaping slavery, some people escaping a famine in their country, risking their life to pursue their destiny in a place where they'll just be left the fuck alone. I try to think about the optimism and fear as you load your wagon to make a journey you will never return from, to see something that you've only heard stories about. 
I think there's a duality to man. There's an evil that came with it, but undoubtedly a type of grit that I admire. Anyway, a nice piece of linen here. I took our brother brand Project Runway sewing machine and just set it to a simple straight stitch. Did one side, draped it over, marked it, did the other side. Simple as. And you know what? I think it turned out great. Looks great next to the log cabin. I connected it to my tortoise for a while to have a bit of fun as she towed it about the house. If you think this is cruel, she can move dining room chairs with her head. She didn't even know it was back there. I put a flicker bulb in there so it looks like a small torch, and I think it's lovely. 